Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Bedrock Guide. And we found something pretty special just now. I just spent about an hour and a half to two hours at the Nether Fortress that we died and lost all of our stuff in the last episode. It was pretty tragic. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. But we are headed back from the Nether to get back into the overworld for our episode today. But we ran into this. If you don't know what this is, this is called Ancient Debris, and it is the most rare and most valuable resource in the game. If you smelt up Ancient Debris, you will get Netherite ingots, and you can apply those to your tools and armor to make them stronger, make them resistant to lava and fire. So we're going to go ahead and mine these and we're going to take them back home with us. This is a historic moment for the Bedrock Guide. We got our first two pieces of ancient debris and we've got over a stack of blaze rods and we have 10 wither skeleton skulls and we're still alive. After a little bit of wandering through the nether, we finally found our pathway back to the portal and we should be seeing it coming into view anytime now. And there's our portal, our exit back home. I know it took a little bit of pain and suffering to get here, but we're finally out with, uh, with some pretty nice resources, to be honest. Okay, well, I'm going to grab the compass here and we're going to throw it in the hot bar and we're going to start our journey back home. We did talk about this in the last episode that you don't really need the map. You honestly don't even need the coordinates. We have them up there, but... Our compass will tell us that this is the correct way to go. So we're going to go drop off the first load, come back, pick up the rest, and then we'll meet you back at home to talk about the goals for today's episode. We made it back to the house, and I've actually got a double chest right here that's filled up with some of the loot that we got in the nether, but there's not really any space over here for that. So I think I'm going to go ahead and expand my storage area. We're not going to do that on camera. I'm just going to do a quick little throw together of something that looks vaguely resemblant of that. And then I'll probably just keep this side for nether and end specific materials whenever we end up going to the end. And that is actually my first of three goals for today's episode. The first being to get a little bit more organized with our storage upstairs. It's not bad, but we got a little bit of work to do. Then we're going to go ahead and build a trash can so that we can throw away all of the excess items that we don't need rather than just letting them despawn on the ground we'll do something fun with it and then last but not least our main project for today is going to be building an auto smelter i decided not to carry the storage all the way over to this little overlook because i didn't want to lose that effect and kind of crowd it with chests and i think this works fine we've got six double chests here dedicated to the nether one hasn't even been touched yet this is going to be for special building blocks like blackstone and basalt things like that and again, this is meant to be beginner storage. This is not all encompassing. We're going to expand to a bigger storage unit once we get to our main location. But I think this will work for now. Then we've also got stuff for potentially the end and maybe ocean related materials could be stored in the rest of these six chests. Or maybe it'll just be end related things. I'm not sure yet. But we've got room for expansion. That's the most important part. On to the next part of our episode for today. We're going to start talking a little bit about redstone today. We've done a little bit of redstone over with the fish farm, but we haven't gone into great detail about what redstone is and how it works. We mentioned this chest really early on in the series and how we were going to turn it into a redstone trash can. And that's what we're going to do today. So we're going to go ahead and break that. And I believe this is going to go straight down into our basement. Yeah, right into the spider web, exactly where we want to be and temporarily just kind of break all of this out so we can actually build the redstone device and then we'll cover it back up. While we're getting situated here, let's talk about this stuff right here. Redstone dust. It can be used to craft various things like compasses, clocks, detector rails, dispensers, droppers, all sorts of things. Many of them we will need over the course of this series, and some of them we'll try to get to if we can. The primary usage for redstone, however, is for redstone wiring. It is the electricity of Minecraft, and if you place one down on the ground like this, you get a little dot. Mine might look a little bit different because I do have a texture pack to clean up the texture a little bit, but either way, it operates the same. And if you place another piece of redstone here, it connects up like a piece of wire. There are some limitations with redstone. However, for example, if you place redstone in a line like this and go all the way up to 15 pieces, I'm not exactly sure how many this is, but if you try to power it, it will power all the way to the end of 15 pieces and then on the 16th piece of redstone, it will not allow any more power past that. 
There are some things in the game like repeaters that can amplify the signal and keep it going past 15 blocks, but those are things that we'll talk about a little bit later. What I think we'll do first is we'll go ahead and toss in some cobblestone, maybe right here, here, and here. We're gonna put another piece right here temporarily, but it will get replaced. And then right in the middle of that cobblestone, we're gonna take a bucket of lava that we grabbed from one of our mine shafts and just toss it right there. This is going to be the disposal system for any items that we do not want. Now we just gotta work on how to get it from here to there. We're gonna build this in a little bit of a reverse order because we're gonna use hoppers to transport it from the chest down into a dropper. And just in case you didn't know, might be pretty basic, but there might be somebody who doesn't know this. If you do drop items into lava, they do get burned up. The only exception is netherite. In order to place the items in the lava automatically without having to place them manually, we're gonna go with some cobblestone, seven pieces just like that, and then one piece of redstone right at the bottom, and this will create a dropper. A dropper is used to drop items or push items into another container, so you could put one next to a chest and force items into the chest. You can also place these horizontally and vertically to create like item tubes and elevators, but it's not really the most efficient way to do that anymore so it's not commonly used. We're gonna go over here and we're gonna be very careful and we're gonna break this right here and then we're gonna quickly place down our dropper so that it is facing this direction. You can't see the little face with the, with the mouth anymore that spits out the items. That is okay. We do know that it is facing into the lava because you can't see it on any of the other three sides. And if we come over here to the dropper, we crouch and right click, it will place a hopper directly on top. Then all we have to do is connect up our hoppers just like this with one facing into the other. We'll have one more right here. And then if we run back upstairs really quick, we'll place one more right on top of that. And then we'll be able to place our chest right there. And that will funnel all of the items down into the dropper. Now that's not gonna do anything yet. It's just going to transport items and place them into that dropper and keep them there. We need a way to activate it so that when there are items in here, it will shoot them into the lava. We're gonna quickly craft up a few redstone components that we're gonna need for this project and just explain very briefly what each of them does. First, we're gonna take some sticks and we're gonna craft up a few redstone torches. These are not a great lighting source. They do emit a little bit of light, but they are not what you're gonna wanna use for lighting your builds. But more so, they are used for powering redstone components. So if we were to come up here and draw drop a piece of redstone on the ground and put a torch right next to it, this will become a powered redstone dust. These redstone torches output a signal strength of 15. You can place them on top of and on the side of any solid surface. With redstone torches, we can also craft up a couple of different things. If we take three stone across the bottom here, one redstone torch on each side and a piece of redstone dust in the middle, we can get a repeater. So just for example, if we put a redstone torch on the ground and then let's just put down three pieces of redstone you can already kind of tell a difference that the signal is weaker because it's not quite as bright red right here it does get darker as you go down to demonstrate a weaker signal strength but if you take a repeater and place it at the end or on the side at the end of the line this right here acts as if it is the full signal strength of 15 from that redstone torch repeated so we can go on another 15 redstone pieces this next item that we're gonna craft is why we needed to go to the nether because we needed this stuff right here, the quartz. If we have a piece of quartz in the middle with three stone across the bottom and then a little pyramid of torches just like so, we're gonna get a comparator. A comparator is a little bit more complicated and we're not gonna spend much time talking about this today because it has a lot of different functions. If you place it down on the ground, this state right here is in comparison mode. And if you right click it to turn on that red torch right at the very front this is in subtract mode we're not going to need to talk about that today it will be a more complex idea that we talk about with future builds just know that this does serve two different functions basically a comparator can take a signal from the back and the sides and it either subtracts or compares those signals to give you the final output. I believe that's everything we need for the trash can itself. We might need more for the furnace here in just a little bit, but this is good for now. So what we wanna do now is take this comparator, 
drop it right here so that the two redstone torches on the back side of the comparator are right up against our dropper here. And what this is going to do is detect whenever there is an item inside of this dropper. If there is an item in the dropper, let's go ahead and throw in some dirt. It will light these torches to indicate that there is something inside. I've crafted a second repeater because I forgot I do need two for this particular design because this dropper is only going to send a signal strength of one to this comparator. We need to make sure that this becomes a signal strength of 15 and we'll explain why that needs to be that in just a second. So in order to accomplish that, we've got a repeater coming out of the comparator, which again, same principle as the redstone torch. If we put a torch here, it's a signal strength of 15 or a torch and a redstone dust and a repeater, still a signal strength of 15. You get the idea. So signal strength of 15 coming out of that repeater, going into a block, which we will place down right here. And then we can place redstone dust here, here, and here. The reason that we did this is because we need for this redstone line to shut this comparator back off, but then we need this comparator to shut the redstone line off when the item is no longer in the dropper. For example, if we place a piece of dirt right there, it is going to start cycling through, and this is a basic redstone clock. Now, it's still going because the dropper hasn't actually been activated, but as soon as the dropper pushes the dirt into the lava, the clock will shut off so that we don't have this constant lighting update going on. In order to get the dropper to fire to shut this clock off, we've got a redstone line that's going to go here and here. We can run a piece of redstone dust parallel to the repeater because they do not connect. But if we were to put another piece of redstone dust here, it's just going to go back into that comparator. We don't want that. So we've got a second repeater that we're going to place down right here. And now these signals will not cross. This signal will go directly into this block right here. When an item enters into the dropper, not only will it shoot off this redstone clock right here, it will also power this block, which powers that redstone dust, which powers that repeater, which powers this block, which because this dropper is directly next to this powered block, it will also power the dropper, spitting the item out into lava. I hope that all makes sense. It seems complicated, and it kind of is if you want to dive into all of the mechanics and the why, but basically all you got to know is this basic circuit right here will allow a piece of whatever item that flows into this dropper to shoot out, and when there's nothing left in there, the circuit will shut off. So we can test that by taking some of this dirt, and boom, 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 all of the dirt goes into the lava, burn into a crisp, Pretty simple. One more thing that I want to do, just as a precaution, we don't want entities floating around. We're just gonna go ahead and cap off this lava with some dirt, and that way none of the items will risk being shot out on top of these cobblestone blocks. It'll just directly go into the lava, burn up, and it's gone forever. I'm gonna go ahead and close this up because we are actually done with the build itself, but there is one more really important thing that we need to do. We're gonna go upstairs and go into the kitchen area where our trash can is going to go, and we are going to use a trapped chest. We are not going to use a regular chest here for one good reason. When we open up a trapped chest, it becomes locked. So if we accidentally put our blocks of iron in there, or diamonds, or heaven forbid, our cookie cutter diamond sword, they will not instantly flow into the hoppers below. It is locked and we will give ourselves a chance to grab those items back out. But for example, if we want to get rid of this cobblestone and get rid of this dirt, and maybe even get rid of our one arrow, because we don't need more than one, we've got plenty upstairs in our chest, we can go ahead and close this, and once it's closed, the items will then be allowed to flow through the hoppers, and you can already hear the system is firing off. We can see that the system is indeed firing. All of the stuff is getting thrown away. Our trash can is working as intended. If we head out back here, you can see I've done a little bit of work. There's not a whole lot to see, but I've done a little bit of terraforming, dug the hill back a little bit back here, and set up a basic structure around where our mine shaft is going to be. But this is where we are going to build the main part of our project for today. 
What I'm thinking for the aesthetics, we're not gonna do on camera because this is not exactly a building episode. We are talking about an auto smelter. We're actually going to divide this into two separate smelters. One of them is going to be for regular furnaces and one of them is going to be for blast furnaces. So we'll only do one of them on camera, but they're exactly the same, just mirrored on opposite sides of this chest right here, which is going to serve as our output chest where all of the smelted items come and we can pick them all out of here. So right here, we're gonna run a couple of hoppers all the way across just like this. And I think we'll do one more right here because I do want each side to have four furnaces and I don't want any of them to be blocked by the fence. So we'll probably cover these up with slabs or something here in a little bit, but we're gonna go ahead and take our standard furnaces and we will right click and place them down here, 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 and there. So any items that smelt in these four furnaces will immediately drop down into the hoppers and then go into this output chest right there. So then the question is, how do we get items into each of these furnaces to smelt? There are a couple of ways. If you look inside of a furnace, you do have a smeltable items spot here, and then a fuel source right here, and the fuel source will smelt the item over into this final box on the right here, and eventually it will drop down into the hopper below into the output chest. Fairly simple, makes sense. So in order to get items in, the first thing we're gonna do is place a hopper into the back of each of these furnaces. This will allow fuel to go into the fuel slot. You can do it from the back, from the side, or from the front. Any of these directions will get fuel into our furnaces. In order to get items into the smeltable item slot, we're going to put hoppers on top. So again, right click and place hoppers on the top here. Then what we can do is grab some powered rails and same thing, make sure to crouch and put powered rails down. Now be careful with your rails. If you don't have them facing a certain direction, when you try to place them up here, they're gonna link with the ones below and just kind of break the whole thing. We don't want them going that direction. The best way to avoid that is to go ahead and build out past where you want to end, which we're gonna have to do anyway, but we'll place down an extra rail right there for the moment, and we'll replace that block a little bit later with something more aesthetically pleasing. But then we can go here and place down a rail, a rail, a rail, a rail, and you see we've got some interference there, so we'll do the same thing down here at the bottom. We'll go ahead and put a block there, rail, rail and then a rail just keep in mind rails they can be pretty annoying don't panic i just rotated everything it's all the same i added a few extra blocks and we'll explain those in just a second but i did have it over here but i thought maybe having it facing this direction if the other one is right here would look a little bit nicer so all we did was run the hopper line a little bit farther you can see that it's actually right there it does go indeed underneath the furnaces all the way back into our output chest so that hasn't changed but now we've got all of this extra space and these extra blocks over here that we need to talk about over on this side of the furnace system, we've got an extra block of space on the end. The reason why we are going to do this is because we're gonna put a powered rail right here and right here. When the minecart rolls across each of these hoppers, it will deposit one item into each one until it gets to here. If we were to have the minecart stop here with a hard stop on the wall right there, it would deposit one item here and then bounce back. And it would kind of leave this one imbalanced with the rest. So if we send it all the way down past the hoppers to an empty space here and a hard stop there, it will bounce back and then deposit another one, another one, another one, another one. So it just keeps everything balanced so that if there's one in this hopper, there's gonna be one in that hopper and so on and so forth. If there's two, there's two. If there's three, there's three. Same goes for the coal, just even distribution. Don't forget to leave one space with an extra rail at the end of your line. Then over on this side, we've left two empty spaces. We're gonna put one powered rail right here and a regular rail right there. The reason why we are doing this is because these are always going to be powered, but this is going to be depowered depending on whether we want the minecart to go or stop. If we're not using it, we don't want the minecart just to be rolling back and forth all the time. We just kind of want to turn it off and let it be until we're ready to load it up again. So we can do the same thing down here for our fuel input. And that's the basic structure of this build. There's only a couple of things left to do. And so we'll go in here just like so and grab another minecart. And then we'll craft up two chests so we can create two minecarts with chests. And then we'll place one here 
and then we'll place another one right there. It's very important that these minecarts be placed up against a solid surface because if you have them against a piece of glass or even a slab, they are not necessarily going to take off or bounce back when you want them to. So always best to put a solid block there. And then we can take a lever and place it down right here and a lever and place it down right here. This one is going to power our minecart with fuel and this one is going to power our minecart with smeltable items. We're not going to send this on its way yet because these rails are not powered, so it will just stop right there. And the way that we're going to power this is we're just going to take one redstone block and we're going to drop it right there above that rail, which will power this line and that line at the same time. The reason that this works is because redstone blocks power things that are directly below, directly beside, directly connected to. Anything that's directly around a redstone block will get powered. So now, in theory, this should be working so we can send our minecart on its way for our fuel. And then when we stop it, it will stop right there. Then we can flip the lever and send our smeltable items minecart on its way. And this is a fully functioning system. And we're going to do the very same design over here. Nothing's going to change. It's just going to be mirrored. But we're going to use blast furnaces this time because I would like to have a smelter just for ores. And look what we've done. <laughs> I've done quite a bit of work. The basic thing that you need to know is that we do have the blast furnace array set up now. So we've got four regular furnaces, four blast furnaces, and they both funnel into this same chest over here. And then we've got our mine shaft drop and our mine shaft ladder to get us back up. And this whole aesthetic is kind of like a little outdoor workspace. We've got a stone cutter and an anvil and some lighting. I'm pretty happy with how the whole thing turned out. So let's run a quick test just to show you that this thing is working. We'll go ahead and drop our smeltable items in there. And then we'll go ahead and drop in some coal to get that going as well. We can go ahead and put coal in this one, but we're not ready to use this one yet because we don't have any ores to smelt. But if we flip both of these levers, you're going to see it's lighting up and ready to go. And as we talked about earlier, oh, we had an extra log. Oh, no, we got pieces of the build. Just, oh, oh, it, oh it ruined the test. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. So now we've got 17 in there, 16 in there, 16. They're smelting up pretty quick. So you get the gist. You get the idea. If we wouldn't have had those few pieces kind of messing up the flow, then, you know, this would all be even. But every Everything is smelting up just fine. Our chest should be empty. Yep, there we go. And everything should be funneling right on into our output chest. So that's it for the build, guys. I'm pretty happy with how this one turned out. A couple of quick things to take care of before we end off today's episode. This right here is doomed. The dog is pronounced as if Yoda were saying this. <laughs> he was named during one of our live streams. And this guy over here is Grogu with a green collar. We really like him. He's a great, he's a great dog. His name is not Baby Yoda. It's not. It's not. So we've got those two guys and we've got a third dog over here. This is the original from our exploration video. And we have not named this doggo yet. I've got a list of names. Come on over here, buddy. Come on. His name's not Buddy. We're not going to name him Buddy. We're going to give him a different name. I've got a list of names that you guys have submitted, and I really like them. I just haven't chosen one yet, and I need to get another name tag so we can do so. So that's going to be a separate episode. But we're going to go ahead and read our comment of the day, which is from Lord Gavitron. And he said, ouch, respect for showing the good with the bad. Let's go ahead and address this as we head on over to the resource roulette area. Yeah, we want to show the good with the bad. The reality of this game is that you're not going to do it perfectly. I definitely don't. If you don't know what we're talking about, the previous episode, we were in the nether and we died and all of our stuff despawned. It was a tragic, tragic moment. And you know what? That's going to happen to you guys every once in a while, too. Hopefully not as often as it happens to me. But you know what? I want to show you guys how to recover from those kinds of things because it is a reality. I don't want you guys to be scared to go to the nether or to go to the end. I want you guys to be able to go tackle those things with confidence. And even if you mess up, even if you fail, even if you die and lose all your stuff, there's ways to get back from that. And, you know, just don't get discouraged. So, yes, we'll show all the good. We'll show all the bad. And hopefully you guys will enjoy it along the way. 
And today's fan pick for Resource Roulette is not actually something you can get in the game, but Prowl's gonna get it for me regardless. <laughs> I don't remember who submitted this one, but somebody suggested that Prowl write a poem for me about how awesome I am. I think this is absolutely going in to this dropper right here. I hope it gets picked. I hope it gets picked. Blue Jay. Hi, Prowl. Long time. Hello, sir. I hit you with the potato. <laughs> Um, it is this time again. It's been a couple episodes, and um, I would like to point out to people before we click buttons that the stakes have been upped significantly. I'm just kind of scrolling through mine right now, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we're going to be making – we're going to have to dish out a lot, whoever loses, which will be yeah. you. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot. Oh, I need to take one thing out. Oh, what do I want to take out? What do I want to take out? Uh, I want to take out uh, that because I got to leave room for a fan pick. And speaking of fan picks, Prowl, have I yeah. got a great one for today. Okay. Oh God. Right, right here. I'm going to throw this it? to you. Here you go. You ready? Catch. Yeah. That's my fan pick for the day. A poem? A poem. How, how is so that? A, that's not a thing. That's not a is. Minecraft item. It is. It is. It is. And let me explain to you how. You ready? So, okay. the person that, that suggested this, I don't remember who it is. I'm going to have to go back and look in my comment section. But they suggested that you write a poem about me, about how awesome I am. And you've got to do it in a book and quill and give it to me and sign it with your name. So. All right, fine. <laughs> it's going right. to be so good. Oh, I'm I mean, going to love I'm... it. I'll read it every day. It'll be great. I'm fine with nonfiction writing. I mean, fiction. Is it fiction or nonfiction? I always get those mixed up. But I can Which lie. Whichever one means it's true. <laughs> All right. Let's get the show on the road. Let's do it. Who goes first? I went first last time, so you're up. All right. Scoot over. Scoot over. I don't want your bad luck around. Okay. Okay. Here's the other. Here's the other rule. I'm not allowed to look yeah. in the dropper because we've been we've been yeah. looking in the dropper to see what we've got. Okay. So what, okay, what do but, we have? But you do want me to show you what it is right now, right? No, I don't. Because that probably okay. means it's good. I mean, I can show it to you. Let's you take a look. You got a mind in here. I hate you so much. <laughs> oh, okay, well, here comes another loss. But we did get lucky last time. So here we go. Three, two, one. Give me a nine. What'd you get? I got a, <laughs> That's I got, not I got, good. I got deuces. Two. I got deuces. Uh, uh, deuces, uh, This is the first time I've lost in a couple rounds. I've, I've had some pretty good yes. luck up until now. So, all right. all right, Prowls fan picks. Here we go. Three, two, one, button. What is iron. It? What is iron valued at? 16? Uh, I think so. Yeah, iron's a pretty good one. Uh, what are you taking out of your, your dropper oh, here, bud? I already had iron in there somehow. So, I'm taking iron out. <laughs> with iron. <laughs> You're replacing iron with iron. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, okay. Do it. All right, here we go. Here's the actual prize in three, two, one. Clickety, clickety, clack. What and, is it? Oh, Blackstone times 32. Yes. I got to go back yes. into the nether for you? No. <sighs> you only die seven times. All right, okay. multiplier. Multiplier. Please give me a one. Please give me a one. Please give me a one. And it is a eight. Oh. Four stacks. <laughs> Four stacks of blackstone for this fool right here. Come on. And, and oh, and we didn't pick up our eggs last time. Speaking of four stacks, we got four stacks of eggs to take home, but. Uh, I can't <sighs> wait. I could definitely use that. Well, see you on the other side. But that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. We're going to go get prepared to go back into the nether. Uh, hopefully for just a short time to go get Prowl his Blackstone. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to leave some comments for me in the comment section. We'd love to hear what you thought about the Redstone builds today. Tell me something that you learned in this episode. And if you are enjoying the series, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more Bedrock Guide content just like this. But thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.